If you allow me, let me just speak a few minutes on, on what I've prepared. And, um, you know, God is a God of eternity. We thank God for his blood. We thank God for the action that he took on behalf of us. You know, um, if you can put up the scripture for me, I think... Uh, it sums it up very well. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Jesus Christ. And this morning, as we are, uh, you know, entering in and as we are, are just in His presence and we are just delighted in the presence of God and everyone just... Every song complimented it. When we, do, we sat at the table of the Lord and we ate, and, and we, we, we related with the Lord this morning, understanding that his, his body was, was uh, 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 crucified for me. Uh, you know, out of that, this morning, we are not, there's not tears of, of hardship, of hearts here. It's, it's, it's a joy that is unspeakable. It's, it's a, a gratitude that you cannot explain because I carry Christ and I know you carry Christ. Otherwise, this morning you would not sit here. I think this is the most important Sunday for us as children of God to be in the house of the Lord and to just to come and to sit and remember the reason why I called myself child of of God. The reason we call ourselves child of God is not because anything we've done. It's because of what He has done for us. So this Easter story and, and Easter weekend, you know, uh, but the Easter story is so profound for the church and, and for the children of God because it speaks about uh, the, the vulnerability of Jesus Christ and the suffering of Jesus Christ at the crucifixion, but it also speaks about the power of God. And, and, and with the resurrection, there's a power. And this morning, me and you, we are sitting here and we are not powerless. We have power. So if there's something you can celebrate, something that you have gratitude, you say, I don't know. I, you, don't, you don't know my life, so how can you say I, I, I can celebrate God's goodness? The power of the resurrection gives us all reason to celebrate and to have a heart of gratitude to say, thank you, Lord, for what you have done. So this morning, I just want to share with us three things, and, and I'll do it very quickly, uh, which uh, uh, God, uh, 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 through Jesus Christ, me and you, the gift we have of eternity. I want to just share with us this morning, Pastor Lambert just spoke about the crucifixion, and we understand that that what Jesus done at the crucifixion was for our sake. So when Jesus walked that road alone, knowing that he's going to be crucified, he knew that was the only way that he could bring forgiveness back to this world. So this morning we are the children of God. We're the family of God. And if we sit here this morning and you carry something in your heart, I want to urge you this morning, release, release uh, things in your heart against people, against God. Maybe you're upset with God. Maybe you're upset with someone. Maybe you're upset with a man of God, a woman of God, or you might be upset with the church. Maybe you keep something against the body or someone in your family. This morning I urge you, the mere fact that Jesus went on the cross, was crucified for us, is to bring back the essence, the power of forgiveness that me and you can be set free. Forgive yourself this morning and forgive those who traced past you. Because uh, something happened at the crucifixion and that what took place was that God 
allowed humans to be pulled out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So where do we live? We live in the kingdom of light. His body was taken down. Listen, some people still think that Jesus Christ is dead. We serve a God that is alive. So what happened that Friday at crucifixion was his body was killed. And, and, and we, 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 if you've watched The Passion of Christ, that movies, you'll understand. He was killed. But something that I could not do was take his life and the love he has for creation. His love that he has for people, the love he has for me and you. And then we go on where we are here this morning, and as the story unfolds, it speaks about the crucifix, um, uh, sorry, the resurrection, and the resurrection was that Sunday. You know, this morning, we cannot walk out this place with something different sealed in your heart. You know why? Because this is a significant Sunday that when uh, Mary uh, um, uh, went, Magdalena and the, the disciples, they went to that tomb. I have been to Israel where they said the cross is, or the grave was, and then they say the grave was here. No matter what they say, the, sto the stone that was was in front of that grave was about as big as this. And no man could roll it out the way. No human power, not one man can today even roll that back and close the grave. They said when they got to the tomb, it was empty. Why? Because he risen. He rose and he's not dead and he fulfilled the offering of eternal life for me and you. So, my sermon this morning was all about eternity. If we understand that what we are gathering yet on earth, what we complain about here on earth, how we live superficial here on earth is so temporary. Because if we understand what God done for us, he done something for us, and that was to give his life, an act of love, in order for me and you to be free. Um, uh, I'm, I'm equating something that Leon said on Wednesday that touched my heart. You know, he just said, he said, if we can just imagine everything that Jesus done here on earth was for our benefit. And whatever we, wherever you are today is not be only because of you. It's because of Christ that made a way for me and you. And, and he rolled the stone away in order for us to benefit. Then, if we understand everything he expects of us, so amazing, is for our benefit. You know, the Word of God says, pray. Pray as much as you can. You can. And it speaks about praise. It says, praise the Lord. It is an expectation from God, but it brings me victory. He says, pray. Stop. Don't stop praying. I want money up on bed. Bed, 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 bed. Bed, 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 bed. And then the command comes, let us as a church pray together. We don't respond. He says, let us as husband and wife pray together. Let us pray with our children. Pray before you eat. Pray, 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 pray. We say, oh, pray, pray. It is for our benefit to connect us with God. It's got nothing. He is connected with us. He is in us. And then, if we understand uh, um, when, there's an, uh, when God expects of us to read the Word of God, you say, I don't like reading. I don't understand the Bible. That's why you should read the Bible. So that you can get understanding and that your life can be impacted. And as well as that we know how to live for eternity, to prepare us for eternity. For eternity. So maybe you can just put up for me Romans 8, 1 to 4. And it says, therefore, um, there is now no condemnation um, for those who live in Christ because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set me free from the, 
from the law of sin and death. And we just sang it this morning and we prayed it this morning and say, God, I'm no longer afraid of death because you have liberated me. So that's the first point this morning. Because of the act of, the, of, of what Christ has done for us on the cross, we are liberated. We are free. Don't put yourself in a prison because of unforgiveness or unresolved issues. Get yourself free of that what the enemy is trying to put you in because of the act of Christ, the act of love. God has, take, has made it possible for us to be free. So we are liberated in him. Christians or children of God, uh, liberty is not mere a, a, a license where I can say I can do what I want. No, liberty says I am free because of the blood of of Jesus Christ. And there comes a responsibility with that. Because I'm free, I have to live responsible as what cross Christ um, expects of me and you. Saying that, remember that our life or our liberty in Christ is a precious gift. Listen, you will not uh, um, handle a precious gift uh, if someone gives you a glass vase, and they say it's from Venice, will you just put it on every corner table if there's little children? What would you do? You'll pack it away. You'll treasure it. You'll put it in a place where no one can, it cannot break, it cannot fall. Yet, we've got the price or the precious gift of liberty, and we don't use it as a precious gift. We take the freedom and we actually abuse that freedom and say, I can do what I want because God will forgive me. He will forgive you. But the, the, the freedom that God gives us should be used wisely. The second one is life. God has given us life. Church, you've got life. You are tuned in. If a car is not tuned in properly, it will, huh, 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 huh. isn't it? A car must be tuned properly to drive. If the radio is not tuned in properly, there will be a, isn't it? Yet, we have the life of Christ, but there is some. Huh? And there is some in our lives. Because the life of God is complete. His body and his blood flowed. His body was broken and his blood flowed in order for us to be, to experience that life. And life abundant. Why would he accept to say, God, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Now, why, don't we con why aren't we content with the life of God? I'm going to close and um, uh, I'm going to just uh, continue with the last point, And that is eternity. So first of all, God has come and has given us freedom. Secondly, he's given us life. But thirdly, because of the act of, the, of, of what Christ has done on the cross, we have eternity. Listen, don't worry about what's going to happen voting day. Don't worry what our country state is going to be in five or ten years. Don't worry what, what you're going to eat or drink when you are old on pension. Rather work on your eternal life with Christ. Amen? There's value. There's provision. There's supply in eternity. If we grab hold on to God's eternal life, we'll understand I will have no lack. So eternity means I can transcend in, um, from, this, from any limitation that, I, that exists now. I can say, Lord, I live beyond the boundaries of time 
and that what you are, uh, what the world is going through. Because I have eternity. So, in Isaiah 26, 4, God, I'm not going to read it. Maybe they put it up, but it says that trust the Lord your God. Sorry, I'm reading it now. <laughs> trust the Lord your God forever. For the Lord himself is the eternal rock. He's steadfast. I, I, nothing can move him if he's an eternal rock. There's your safety. Your safety is not in your family. Your safety is not in a, in, in a, in a, in a political party. Your safety is in Christ. Another one, the Lord is eternal king. Jeremiah 10.10. 10. It says, but the Lord is true. At the true God, he's a living God. He's eternal king. We serve a king that is eternal. He's not going to drop you. He's not going to let you down. He's not going to let you fall. I, I, he is that good shepherd. He's a king that rules. So, you know that the light always overcomes darkness. The king will make sure that darkness will not overrule um, uh, this uh, nation or creation. Amen? And then the th other one is the, it, um, that the eternal ways of God are revealed through his actions. And um, that is in Habakkuk 3, 6. It just ends off there saying, his ways are eternal. And then everything submits to the word of God. Earth as well as the heavens in Psalms 119, 89. So his kingdom and his domain is eternal. So if you live here or you live in heaven, you can live an eternal life. And the last one is his, his sovereignty is eternal in Psalms 68 verse 33. It says, to him who rides across the highest heavens, the ancient heavens, who thunders with, with his mighty voice. What does this verse say? It says that all creation responds to the voice of the majestic presence of God. So, I'm a child of God. Because I serve a God who is as solid as a rock. He's unchanging. He's steadfast in nature. He's a king. He's king eternal. He reigns beyond the time and space, ruling over all creation. His ways are eternal, so his purpose will always prevail. And then he's a sovereign. His sovereignty is eternal. This means God's majestic presence and his authority, his voice, and his reign is timeless. Amen? Amen. Short and sweet, but I pray that you understand the power of, the, of this morning and that what God um, done in order for me and you, that God loved us so much as it says in John 3.16, uh, that it made it possible to reunite us with him. His life was offered for our freedom. His blood flowed for our redemption, and we have eternity. So this morning, maybe we can just close our eyes, and I'm just going to pray for us. Father, we thank you, Father, for your word this morning, Father. Father, that it's clear, Father, that in you we have freedom, in you we have life, and in you we have eternity. So this morning we say, worthy is your name, Father. You are the name above all names. Be exalted in the heavens and in the earth, Father. You alone deserve our praise this morning, Father. And we stand amazed, Father, this morning of your goodness. And we thank you that we are free. We are washed free by the blood of Jesus. 
And we thank you, Father, for liberty, for freedom, to reign, Father, with you, Father. Father, we thank you for victory, Father, over sickness, victory over defeat, Father, over lack, Father, any slavery, Father. We are not part of this world, Father, of world system, Father. We're in this world, but we're part of a kingdom that is unshakable, Father. We are part of your kingdom, Father, that is eternal father and we give you all the glory all the honor all the praise and the and and the people of God this morning shout praises to you father as we give you glory can we just shout praises and amen amen hallelujah hallelujah glory to you father as we worship you father and we say thank you that we have the privilege to celebrate Father, your love this morning, Father, and celebrate the life, Father, of Christ, Father. Celebrate, Father, who you are, Father, and we can just uh, be grateful, Father, for the act of love in Jesus' name. Amen.